All right, I'm gonna make a video on how these self-propelled systems work. This is the personal pace model, which you can always see by the sticker here. Um, obviously, handlebars are actually um, on tracks when you slide it forward and backwards. It pulls on this, this lever here turns, which pulls on this cable, which basically kind of resembles a, to me, like an older system where it was just on or off, because it, it's kind of the same thing where it rotates the gearbox and tensions the belt. It's not actually variable at all. Um, I'll show you the inside of this box. It's really nothing uh, complicated at all. Here's basically the inside of this box. It's just made up of kind of like a ring and pinion system. Um, here's the other side of it. This, there's nothing going on with this pulley. It's not like a snowmobile pulley or anything. It doesn't change um, sizes or anything by uh, expanding or contracting. It's all one piece. That, this is the rest of the transmission here. I'll show you how that works in a little bit. And these are the bushings that hold the shaft in place. That's basically it. It's kind of like a ring and pinion uh, system. So now back to the mower. Um, basically, yeah, you push on the handlebars, and this rotates, and it tensions the belt. The belt's actually driven by the blade adapter. It's got a V-belt pulley on it. It's built in. All right, so when you tension the belt using the handlebars, it then turns the transmission um, the opposite direction of the wheels. And obviously it does that because the wheels are driven with... Um, an outside gear like this so they turn opposite one more component of it these here these gears actually drive the wheels are uh, they're on basically they're on one-way clutches let's say I spin the belt which would spin it this way this would be the normal direction that it would spin I'm just turning the belt here you can see that wheel is going like that which is the normal forward direction so is this one, and when it goes this way, it's locked. So it's always pushing forward. And if you were to push the mower forward by just by hand, it'll roll forward. But obviously when you go backwards, you probably notice when you're pulling the mower backwards, you hear the gears. Well, that's obviously just the gears turning here. It's pretty simple how these one of my clutches work. I'll show you my spare one. On the shaft here, there is a groove. And in the groove sits a spring that looks like this, and this little key. And the key sits on top of the spring. And this is the uh, gear that goes on the shaft here. And when this spins, you can kind of tell how it works. The spring's always putting tension on the key, which means when you turn it one way, it'll turn freely. But if you were to turn it the other way, it locks because the key won't go down that sharp edge there. So essentially they're only one-way clutches, that's all they do. Which makes it so that you can push them over forward and move it around when it's off. And without turning the transmission. And then it also does the function of like a differential. You can turn left and turn right and it won't bind up the wheels together. On snow blowers, they usually have a locked rear axle and it's always kind of annoying. But on this they just put clutches at each wheel so it eliminates that problem. So now that you have a good idea about how it works, I imagine you're probably watching this video because you're having a problem with yours. Of course, there are a lot of different problems you could have with this. I guess I'll just start with the very first component, which is what you're pulling on. This is the cable. You push on the handlebars, and this is pulling this cable, which is engaging that gearbox to the belt. Now, if, if, it's, if you're pushing the handlebars halfway, and it's just now starting to grab, well, that's possibly an indication of either a stretch belt or the cable's out of adjustment. Sometimes you just want to adjust where it actually grabs when they're new. Sometimes they're not where you might want them. So obviously you can loosen this nut here, and you can slide this this outside sheeting of this cable one way or another. Um, obviously moving the whole cable this way would make it tighter, and then vice versa would be looser. And of course, it's easy to inspect all these parts in case this is actually the problem. You can see how this works. This bar just kind of sits in this groove here. That's how that works. It's pretty simple. And there is a spring on here that helps return it back to normal. You can see what happens when I do that. The whole gearbox rotates and it's it's actually mounted on the shaft. 
itself that drives the uh, wheels. So once that engages, the belt obviously gets engaged to the crankshaft. Um, I've seen these belts get stretched and I've seen them get really uh, dried out and cracked. And usually, um, I think what usually what happens is um, you only get a little bit of assist. So even if even if you were to adjust this, you know, to make it tighter and you have this thing engaging like a quarter inch depressed, but it still doesn't give you very much assist. If you look, if I pull this gearbox down, it actually bottoms out into the cable. So a lot of times it'll be stretched to the point where you can't adjust it anymore because it stops there and you're just barely getting the slack out of the belt. So if that's your problem, definitely going to be a belt problem. And changing the belt out, I've actually never done just a belt on one of these. I've taken it all apart. Um, it probably would be slightly labor intensive to change just the belt because this pulley, if you look at the gearbox, it's got the shroud all around it, which means in order to really get to it, you would need to pull it apart, which I have another video on taking the whole thing out. You can kind of judge from that video about what you need to do. You can see that the belt is actually held on by this bracket. So you would probably have to take the transmission. I would just take it all the way out like I did in my other video. And uh, obviously you take this bracket off. This just slides right around the gearbox. You can change your belt, put the new belt on it, and then bolt the bracket back on and then reassemble the whole thing again. So that probably wouldn't be too fun just for a belt, but... Obviously, I took it apart, and you can service all these one-way clutches, and then I actually opened up the gearbox, and, uh, well, you can see this one. The grease is all dry and kind of nasty. This was actually probably worse than that one. Um, a little bit of water had gotten in it over time, so as you can see, I actually put a little bead of RTV all the way around everything, including the bushing here. Obviously, you could have a stripped out gearbox if it just makes noise, but it doesn't go anywhere. That ring and pinion gear is probably stripped out. Um, when I took mine apart, you could tell on the ring gear. This is my spare one, which is actually a little bit in better shape than my um, the one that's on my mower. And even on this one, you can see a little bit of uh, wear in some places, but this one's not too bad. Mine, you could tell about halfway up the gear, there was a little bit of a worn groove along the whole thing. Um, which is just, you know, indicative of wear. Um, I put new grease and everything in it. I guess the last thing would be that these clutches, the grease that's in these clutches probably got so hard that the key actually stopped grabbing the pulley very well. Maybe it skips or something because it's stuck down. And when I took these apart, the spring that's in there actually was kind of stuck in there because it was just, the grease was just so dry. So it probably wasn't too far away from actually having problems with it. But, as you can see, a little bit of grease, well, a little bit of cleaning first, and a little bit of grease, and they work like new again. I chose um, silicone paste because it's really good at keeping water out, which I do, t I do wash my mower a lot, so I would like to keep water out of it if possible. A good way to tell would probably be to uh, just lift the back end of the mower up and spin the wheels. Like this one here, if I spin the wheel, uh, this would be going backwards, which spins the gearbox like it's supposed to. If it didn't do that, then you would know there's probably a problem with the key because you can look at the shaft to see if that's turning. It turns the opposite way, obviously. And when you go forward with it, it just clicks. You should be able to hear some sort of clicking. Um, this was actually, the clicking was a lot louder uh, before I cleaned and greased these. Now it's actually fairly quiet. And that's really about all the problems I can think of having with the system. It's actually, it seems to me to be a pretty good system. I've seen a lot worse. A lot of mowers have plastic gears and everything, but these are all metal. I, have, I don't know about all models. This is a 2007 model. And everything is metal on this one. Um, the last thing, I guess, if, of course, if the wheels are getting stiff to turn, these wheels roll on the bolts, essentially. And you can see they have shoulders on them. And that rolls on these inner races and these wheels. And I grease these before I put them back. Of course, there's always a chance that the gear in here could come off. There's a bunch of little things that could happen. He's going to have to check it out. But it's just a basic, simple um, explanation of how it works. It's a little bit simpler than I thought. Because when I originally thought variable, I thought there must have been some sort of uh, pulley that maybe changes. Um, kind of like a snowmobile transmission where it 
the di the distance between the two ridges of the pulley would change. You know, maybe when you tension this, it opens up the pulley more and makes it smaller, which drives it faster. That's kind of what I figured it would be, but it's actually just like a normal system that um, doesn't fully engage by pulling a lever. It's just it, essentially, I guess, it just slips the belt if you're going at half speed all the time. The belt's just constantly slipping, as far as I can tell. I'm surprised this belt looks as good as it does for having, uh, you know, 11 years of use on it. Now that I've been using this mower with that system, I've gone to other ones, and I, I can't even use the other ones, or at least I don't want to. I don't want to have to flip a lever up and down every single time I want to move it. This is just much more natural. And I'm sure they have a patent on this, because I've never seen this on any other mower, where it's actually the handle that slides. Yeah, let's see, that's probably about it. Uh, you can watch the other video if you want to see me take this all apart and service it, even though they say this is non-serviceable. Um, I would do it just because of how bad this one and my spare one looked. I'll show you pictures here. It looked, mine actually looked pretty bad because I think water had been getting in through the bushings just from washing it or through the cover. I'll explain a little why I think water got into it. Here's my spare one that I already re-greased and sealed up, but normally there's just a gasket that goes around this cover. There doesn't appear to be anything that goes in between the steel bushing and then the aluminum case. So water could just go right in there, I guess, if it were sprayed at it. Usually what I do is I lift a mower up from the front and I'd spray it. And, well, yeah, water's going to get in. So that's why this one, I ran a bead of RTV all the way around that groove. And then set the bushing in place so that way no water's getting in there. The only place it can now is through the... Sh where the shaft meets the bushing, where it spins. But I applied grease to the shaft and the inside of that bushing before I slid it on. So, and then there's grease in between all the parts on the inside because on the other side of this bushing, it meets up with the ring gear uh, pretty closely. So with grease packed in all those areas, I don't think there's going to be any more problems with water getting in it. All right, and this is the next day. I've already started getting it uh, assembled a little bit further. So I don't really want to tip it over anymore, but I figured if you're still watching this, you probably are interested in kind of a little more how it works, and I've been kind of figuring out exactly what it probably is, what's happening when it's operating. It's actually kind of interesting how this works. From my viewpoint, it's very similar to a governor on an engine, on a small engine like this. If you pull on the spring, it'll pull harder on whatever it's attached to, like this gearbox, but obviously like the governor system on the engine, which has two counteracting forces, the spring, and then the weights inside of the motor. And it, and it suddenly it dawned on me that this gearbox, being that it's not attached to anything, when this gearbox outputs torque, where's the, you know, for that action, there's got to be a reaction, so where is it going? It's actually turning the gearbox the other way. So essentially there's two actions working against each other. You have the torque from the gearbox outputting to the wheels, which of course is... Um, it's the torque is increased based on the two sizes of the gears, so it's all engineered pretty well. Um, you have the torque of that outputting to the wheels versus the amount of tension you're pulling on the handlebars. And those two actions are constantly working against each other, and that spring will be stretching out um, based on, I guess, the amount of torque that's actually being put out. So essentially, when you're pushing that those handlebars forward, you're really um, you're really setting the amount of torque that this box can put out. Now, of course, it is still slipping the belt to give you that fine, like, amount of um, torque that you want. But it's just it's just those two actions working against each other that are actually giving you your smooth variable output, essentially. So just the whole time you have, you have the gearbox when it's outputting torque, it always wants to go back to the, the belt in a slack position at the same time you're pulling on a cable with the spring to want it to go to the tension position because this is the exact same thing that's going on inside of this motor when you want a certain speed on the engine um, the, the governor weights in here are trying to pull the throttle to, um, to, to closed but the spring here is pulling it to open so anytime you shut your mower off and it's not turning you're always at wide open throttle and it's not until you start it that it, it goes to where it needs to go and then when you load up the engine 
put a load on it, it's going to want to spin slower. When that happens, the governor spins slower, which pulls less force towards close, so it makes the throttle open more when you put more load. So it's kind of this, these two forces acting on each other to keep your uh, engine speed proper. And this self-propelled system works exactly the same way. You have the force that you're putting on the handlebars pulling on the spring. That's kind of where you're pulling it set, just like the spring on here. And then you have the torque that that gearbox is outputting. And that torque wants to spin it the other way, and when that happens, it's loosening the belt at the same time. So you have those two forces acting on each other all the time to give you a variable speed. So they, they work remarkably similar. And with a belt driving a gearbox like this, you won't normally have um, the option of making it smooth like that. Usually it kind of just grabs at a certain point, but with the system just like this on this engine, you can kind of achieve something like variable just by a really simple system like this. That isn't actually variable by design, it's just they're making it variable. It's kind of interesting. I just kind of figured that out actually after I made the earlier part of this video. So I figured I'd, once I figured that out, I might as well add that a little bit. Because I didn't even realize that at first. I was, I kept thinking about it and thinking about it, but I was just wondering how it works so smooth. But if you take a regular one that just has a, um, you know, a single handle where you just engage and disengage it, which does the exact same thing that this is doing, that one you can't even make it variable if you just pull a little bit. It just, it's really crude. Hopefully, everything that I figured out on that last part is correct. I'm fairly confident on that. Although I'm, I'm no engineer or anything, but. That's probably as close of an engineering thinking that I can think of right there. That's pretty neat. Alright, so thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video.